Hi, I'm Abi from Plural, and today I'm going to be going over setting up a Kubernetes cluster and an Airbyte instance running on that Kubernetes cluster all within our command line. So let's first pull Plural down with a quick brew install. We're now going to run Plural init, which will create a repository for us to hold all of the configuration required for spinning up a Kubernetes cluster. It will additionally contain all of the Helm and Terraform required for spinning up our console and our Airbyte instance. After that, since Plural has recognized that we're not in a Git repository already, it will prompt us to create one. We will then go through a OAuth workflow to let Plural create a repository on our behalf. Plural will then create a set of SSH keys to make sure that it can commit files specifically for this repository that we're creating under our account. We're going to choose not to save these SSH keys locally because we already have SSH configured with GitHub. If you want to use GitLab for SCM, we do support that and Bitbucket support will be on the way shortly. After we finish naming the repo, we can go ahead and finish the creation of that repo. And here is where Plural will recognize if you're already logged in to app.plural.sh, otherwise it will prompt you to log in there. Now we're going to choose the name of our cluster, which will be the same as our repository, and we will choose where we want to deploy our cluster in AWS. Keep in mind that in order for this to work, you will need to have configured your AWS CLI, or if you use a different cloud provider CLI, you will have to configure that beforehand. Plural will create object storage buckets of the cloud provider of your choice, to hold database backups and logs. So we're just gonna go ahead and give a prefix to make sure that we deduplicate these buckets. To finish up the setup process, we're gonna configure DNS. This is where Plural is going to host all of your applications. For example, your application will be located at application name .subdomain .onplural sh. If your organization requires that you use your own DNS provider, you can go ahead and do that but we have provided this service as a convenience to developers. Now that our workspace is properly configured, we can go ahead and start installing our applications. To check out the name of the application that you want to install for your specific cloud provider, we can do a plural bundle list. So we can do plural bundle list console to find the specific version of console that we need for AWS. We can then install console with a plural bundle install console, console AWS. We will now go through the configuration process for our application. We're gonna be first prompted to enter a VPC name, which will create a virtual private cloud in AWS for all of our plural resources to be hosted in. Then we're going to name our wall bucket, which contains the write ahead logs for the Postgres database that backs Plural. We want to set this up so that we can do backup and restore operations. You can go ahead and just press enter to use the default name. Similar to before, we're going to set up DNS for this specific application. We recommend just using the application name to keep it simple, but you can go ahead and name it whatever you want. After setting our admin name, we're going to go ahead and be prompted with whether or not we want to enable Plural OIDC. OpenID Connect gives you a way to manage authentication across all of your Plural applications by just being logged in to app.plural.sh. For example, you won't need to set up usernames and passwords for every single application that we deploy on Plural. We can just use the fact that you are logged into Plural to OAuth you into every one of your applications. This is created for your convenience, but if you have a restriction on using this, you can use manual authentication for each one of your applications. After we've gone through this configuration wizard, Plural will have all of the information needed to successfully create the Helm and Terraform required for spinning up our console on Kubernetes. We will now do the same process for Airbyte, and you'll notice that we don't have to set up the VPC name and wall bucket as those are one-time operations. We will, however, be prompted to set up a bucket for Airbyte logs, and as before, set up a specific domain to visit our Airbyte application at. We will as well be prompted to set up a domain name for the Airbyte API, and as before, we'll be asked if we want to set up Plural OIDC. Now we will use Plural build to tell Plural to write our deployment files based off of the configuration that we gave in both of these setup processes. 
the final step will just be using plural deploy commit to commit this configuration to the Git repository that we set up initially and to tell Plural to deploy what we have configured into our Kubernetes cluster. After we have entered this command, Terraform will start building the resources that you need, and this will likely take a decent amount of time as we are requesting infrastructure from your cloud provider. So just sit back for a few minutes until all of your infrastructure is deployed. After waiting for a small bit, we can see that Plural has completed our installation of our console and Airbyte into our now provisioned Kubernetes cluster. Because we enabled Plural OIDC earlier, we are now able to access our console simply by authenticating with Plural. In the console, we have a few notable components. First off, we have a runbooks tab that contains recommended settings and optimal operating procedures for your application. We can then look into the status of each individual component in our Airbyte deployment. We can look into pod logs, pod events, and use these to drill down if there's anything going wrong with our Kubernetes cluster. We can additionally check out node health, looking at the utilization of resources, and we can look at incidents, which are automatically created by Plural and will set up a connection with our support team. And finally, we can go over to the dashboards tab to look at the charts that have been custom tailored for this application. Every Plural application will ship with their own custom console dashboards. We can then also check out our Airbyte deployment, which is going to be hosted at the subdomain that we specified earlier. Since we have enabled Plural OIDC, we don't need to manage authentication for logging into our Airbyte UI. If you have any further questions about this tutorial, feel free to hop in the Plural Discord, which will be linked in the description below.